on Good morning, Anna Lee. Good morning, Jose. Good to see you, my friend. Robert, welcome. Justin, partner in Art Crime. Lauren, good morning from the Midwest. Louise in either the UK or South Africa. We will find her and geolocate her instantly. Sean, Augustine, welcome. Welcome to the Gray Swan Guild, Day of the Swan. We're just going to warm up a little bit, let the room fill, and, uh, and talk a little bit about the day and introduce things for everybody. Um, good morning, all. Hanley, how is the weather where you are and how is the power? Well, the weather is good, uh, Johannesburg at least. We don't know about the power, we'll see later today. We've had these um, power outages every evening during the week and on weekends, sometimes three times a day in Johannesburg. Our power grid is struggling, but we are here. Thank you, all good. Good, good, good. Oh, always the balance, always the balance. Nathan, how's the weather in the US of A? Uh, we've had a respite from the heat. It's just gorgeous this morning. I'm, I'm ready for my morning run as, as soon as I can sneak out of here. Uh, how far do you go? Varies. Um, let's see. So I should switch it to kilometers for everybody. Um, five to 10, typically. Nice. Good for you. Good for you. Good morning, Chuck. How are you? Good morning. <laughs> it is raining all day long. And where do we find you in the rain? Uh, East Tennessee. Uh, in the mountains, yes. Great Smoky Mountains. Can you hear me okay, or do I need to put on my headphones? No, you're, you're clear as a bell, Chuck. Welcome, okay. welcome. And Jose, uh, out in uh, Germany today, yes? Yeah, everything is beautiful here. The weather is great. We have our war next door, but other than that, everything is great. <laughs> the war next door, Sean, the war <laughs> next door. Oh, my goodness, it's so close. I was discussing something with uh, one of the swans yesterday, and he was on a flight from, he's on a flight now, uh, from Oslo to Helsinki, and I said, "Rick, that's that's a direction the airspace is open, and indeed it is. The war next door." Yeah. Stephanie, welcome. Where do we find you today, and how's the weather? Oh, I'm I'm in Berlin, and the weather oh. is beautiful. Yeah, good, good, good. And, good morning. Uh, I'm in Chicago, and I'm uh, just uh, getting started with my day, so I'm just going to be on mute and listening in. Thanks. No problem, just running around the room till it uh, fills up. We'll get going in uh, about one or two or three minutes. Robert, where do we find you today? That's a beautiful background. Thank you. Oh, you're on mute, sir. You're still on mute. So I put a, I'm gonna put a nickel in the, in the jar each time I say that. Oh, okay. No worries. Uh, Anyway, despite the background, I'm really in Houston, and uh, it is um, a nice day for once. Uh, we had uh, about two weeks of really, really, really hot weather, mm -hmm. and uh, we shoved it further east. Uh, but uh, right now, it's pretty nice. It's 61 degrees in Houston and sunny. Nice. That's good. I've only been in the airport in Houston, and then I had to leave town right away. They heard about me. I see. Okay. Back on the plane. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> it's kind of a, it's one of those is what it is things. Yeah. And Augustine, where do we find you today? Well, you're in Uruguay. Como esta usted? Roughly, what, 10, 11, uh, well, Celsius degrees. And so we are straight in autumn and it's kind of humid and it rains sometimes, but today it's a clear sky lovely sunny and uh, you know that that gives you the sense that it's going to warm up during the day mm -hmm. so it's going to be a one hell of a thursday second edition a day of the swan bring to you by great swan guild hope that you like it and you enjoy Thank it you. augustine long time member of the great swan guild early promoter of all things media, content creator, genius, the only monk I know personally. That's my cue to, to disappear, bye. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sean, uh, I'm gonna turn on the live switch, hold your breath, and uh, then we'll start kicking it off, is that okay? And one and two. All right. 
Got to do this. And we are on the internet. Welcome, everybody, to the Gray Swan Guild Day of the Swan, the second anniversary of the Gray Swan Guild, which uh, the co founders, Andrea Cates, Rob Tyree, Sean Moffitt, began on a couple of phone calls back in March 2020. And we are on the internet. Welcome, everybody, to the great. And we will get rid of the lag. Um, so sorry about that. Uh, so we, uh, we we're in March 2020, and uh, both Sean and I were thinking about the world and what was going on. Sean wrote an essay that was the first uh, broad scope look to the future and look back to the past about major pandemics, major economic uh, events, how there were repeating patterns. And it was the first broad scope article I'd read. I read a lot of narrow scope articles. I was reading uh, the South China Morning Post every morning to get a view of what was going on in the first few hundred cases because it was a novel coronavirus and that's always unusual and the, it, the case counts were going up exponentially. So that caught my attention in January. And, uh, and then by March uh, on the uh, eve of the uh, declaration of pandemic by the World Health Organization, things were serious and uh, things needed to be made sense of. And as I was reading that, and I know Sean from uh, Toronto and networking and business uh, areas, I read the uh, article, so I, messaged him and I said, hey, let's uh, let's get together and write something about this. I wanna take your article and tune it for the insurance industry and, and other things. And, and then that was the seed that started all this. Sean? Yeah, wow. And in some respects, I go back to some of those early notes that we exchanged back and forth and it feels a little bit like 20 years ago and a little bit like four months ago. Um, I'm, I'm betwixt and between on that, but I, I love this day. This is, I mean, this, I mean, we have many big days in the guild, but this is truly our, our masters, our um, Olympics or whatever um, thing you want to ascribe it to. And I think you know, as I, I think about all the great stuff that we're going to do over the next 24 hours, I think this day for me represents three things. One, kind of a celebration. I mean, we should have a birthday cake or something, Rob, but like uh, something with two candles on it. Um, it's our second year. Um, it started with a crazy group of people that thought we could make a difference and try to understand the world a little bit better. And I think it's become bigger, obviously, in terms of number of members and things that we do. Uh, and so it's a real celebration. I think it's thanks. Uh, we're just, you're ta just talking about Agustine. I see Louise. I see um, a whole bunch of people, both people that I've known for two years in the guild throughout this crazy thing called COVID and people that I've just known as of last week. And I think um, my hope is we get a whole bunch of new people in. This tends to be the day that we bring the most people into the guild. So my hope is we see some new voices. And then finally, the journey continues, right, Rob? I mean, uh, it's funny how COVID goes off the front page, but um, if it's not COVID, we're thinking about Russia or Ukraine. Um, and I know we're going to go into a news hour and explore some of these subjects, but the need to make sense of the world and the next gray swans continues. So uh, I'm looking forward to these 24 hours of coverage. When we, uh, we do uh, at the Guild, we do uh, the main core purpose is to be a think tank and a do tank to do sense making and futures thinking together. Uh, we explore new areas that emerge. Uh, many of us that are involved in the Guild uh, have day jobs and we do something quite different. Uh, in my instance, I am a professional advisor and consultant to the software industry. I specialize in insurance and banking and doing great big uh, deployments of business software, sales software, marketing software for industry, and mostly in the US. Uh, although I live in Toronto, 99% of my time is focused on major brands in the US. And uh, when you narrow like that, when you find yourself in the pipes of a guide wire deployment for 3,000 underwriters in Columbus, Ohio, um, you get kind of in a box like this. And uh, as I progressed through my career uh, as an independent uh, business, I uh, take the time to take stock. And one of the things that I've enjoyed from being in the guild 
is uh, taking a step back, learning from people like Louise and, and Lauren about new ways of thinking, new ways of leading. And then one of my missions uh, is, uh, is to write more. I like to write. I'm not a very good writer, as I, I see, but I have very good editors. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it gives me a chance to write about things that are outside my normal day. So rather than just read a magazine or read The Economist, um, I, I drill into things. Why are you in the Guild, Sean? Ooh, um, I love, I, th I thought you were going to go down the road. So I'm going to use the thing that you usually say. It's, um, it's a great experimental ground, right? I'm, a, I'm an innovator and change agent by trade. And so certain things that I've thought, you know what, I'd love to do that, but um, maybe I'll do it within kind of the guild sphere and um, where we have this culture of experimentation. So even when it goes wrong, I'll freely admit our Gray Swan Jeopardy over Christmas, not the best event I've ever done. Um, but there have been other things that have been magic that I've now reapplied to the rest of my life and work. Um, I just find, you know, what, I can't think of another great, more noble kind of um, excuse to get together with people around the world that although we all think differently, we all have come together for the common mission of um, kind of learning from each other, um, pulling on the collaborative rope together and uh, building something really, really interesting and new. So, um, so yeah, that's how I see the guild in my life. I'm going to roll around the room a little bit uh, to talk about that because you've all been in all, involved in different ways or some of us have been involved in different ways. So, so Louise and, and Lauren, uh, you're early on in, you've already had developed another kind of think tank. And, and Louise, always interested in your practice and why you're in the guild. But uh, first, uh, I know off over to uh, Augustine, you were one of the first person that came in and you're always pushing us for new media. And you know, you're one of the founders of uh, our in insertion into Clubhouse. You taught me how to say, I'm Rob, I'm done. So, uh, I I want to to stay in touch with what Sean said that it feels like it's been like twenty years and you look back and it's like only just a couple of it and and we have we have been this journey I mean you guys uh, started probably around this time two years ago and around September October Sean onboarded me uh, through. Um, you know, the sense making core team. And um, I start there and I started seeing all the all the things that Grace Van Gid were putting out. And so I start getting really involved and dive deep into the core core uh, foundation of it, right? And so we have done so many things that uh, you will have to excuse me that a few are going to be out because we have news wraps, we have um, ateliers, we have sessions, we have uh, craft making, we have, I don't know, we have so many venues, ventures, uh, now with uh, Signus that uh, Sean is launching. We have a lot of interested people around the world. We have collaborators and it's been like, a, uh, really joy and you always said it's like a sense of belonging right I think that the guild uh, put us like together like with a sense of belonging so we we certainly have explored and served many futures and we are there constructing them all along together that's that's the real magic of the guild that people from so many backgrounds and differences and countries and languages and cultures coming up like together with like, there's no, there's no judgment, there's no nothing. We just like go through and put ourselves up and we work and we collaborate. And I always feel uh, really blessed with having part of the rap and the editions. I'm kind of a guy that likes to edit text, photo, video, whatever. So I always uh, thought that I fit there. And I did my best and I had amazing, amazing conversations and, uh, you know, time with people. So thanks. Thanks for having me here today. I will be uh, in the back, at the back end and the backup during the whole 24 hours. So 
I'm here. Excellent. Anyone wants to connect, happy to. Thanks, Augustine. That's a good point as well. Thank you for all your efforts. And if you want to connect with people as you see them, put your contact information in the chat. We'll all be doing that. You can always go to Grace One Guild, our website. The live things that happen every day on the Guild happen on our LinkedIn page. If you find us, just search for Grace Wong Guild. We're pretty much labeled everywhere. But the LinkedIn page is where things happen in weekly, and we invite people to events like this. Louise, why are you in the Guild? On mute. You're on mute, of course. <laughs> Okay, Rob, what did you say about that 10 cents? I think we're gonna make you a wealthy man today. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna keep it, it's, uh, it's the funds. It's the funds to, to spend on video. Go ahead. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's um, gosh, I stumbled across the Gills post just started showing up in my LinkedIn feed. I'm not entirely sure why. I, either LinkedIn has got a great algorithm going on and figured that it's stuff that I'm really interested in or, um, Somebody put me onto it, I, I forget. But um, once I realized that the, the Guild was a collection of big thinkers, deep thinkers, different thinkers, um, and people who were looking at the world in a way that, you know, often I looked at it, it just felt like a home from home. And, you know, I, I often look back at two years of pandemic and think, you know, if there was one brilliant thing that came out of it for me, it was finding you guys <laughs> in the guild. And it's just been a constant companion ever since. And um, yeah, I'm really happy to contribute. Um, but more importantly, I learn constantly from everybody. And that for me is probably the most fun I can have in a day. So, so yeah, of course, have my day job, do my usual stuff, but um, massive, feel massively more informed and um, Lots of provocative insights, uh, it's deepened my, um, my understanding of the things that I'm interested in anyway, things like futures thinking and complexity. And I've met some extraordinary people um, and I'm actually doing some business with some extraordinary people as a result. Of, you know, it was never the aim or the purpose, but it sort of evolved that way. And uh, yeah, all good stuff. So may, long may it continue. Thank you, Louise. I know uh, when you did your first session, we did this big atelier and you did it on resilience. It still should be a book. It was just fantastically done. And I know you're doing a session later on today. What are we talking about today? Yeah, I'm talking about the power of collective wisdom. I mean, probably in the true spirit of, of the Guild itself. And um, yeah, looking forward to that. And also kind of throw some other stuff in there, like the what does the future of leadership look like? And what does it mean to be future fit? You know, what are our mental models and who are we anyway? <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. So hopefully it'll be, everyone will join me for a bit of an exploration and that, that's, what it, that's what it's designed for. Awesome. Uh, Augustine, could you put up the schedule in the chat? There's a link on Medium to the Data Glance that's got the times of things. And Lauren, why are you in the Guild? Remind me. Uh, well, first I met um, Sean. I was just so impressed. Um, Sean is just very impressive and uh, so, so generous with his um, time and intelligence and wisdom and just so nice as well. So, um, yeah, I was I was a lured in by Sean somehow. And then uh, then I met Rob. And Rob and I hit it off right away. And I've just been so happy to um, meet everyone. And I, you know, I had uh, another uh, think tank, uh, collective intelligence think tank called Kiko Lab. Um, but I was always just um, so admiring the way that Grace One builds things and the kind of self-organizing uh, principles. I wish I had met Rob uh, earlier. Um, yeah, so I that's what I, I really love um, around here. And I've just learned so much from, uh, you know, the people I've met so far. So I look forward to a brilliant future with you all. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, when I met Lauren, uh, one of the reasons we're on a, on one of the sessions and I saw she was based in 
Paris. And I love Paris. I love France. And I, and I heard her speak and I wanted to talk to her because I wanted a connection there. And then, like she said, we hit it off right away. Uh, and then one of the things that's very true, what I know about Lauren is she's a human that I know that thinks- I am, that, I am a human. <laughs> I, sometimes I'm not sure because, because Lauren, when she's thinking and processing, is a person that thinks most like a deep learning algorithm that I know. When I talk to Lauren and we process something in the world or a, a psychological aspect, Jose, she thinks like an algorithm. And she's not a computer scientist, but she's got lots of psychology behind her and lots of neuroscience behind her in her, in her mission and education. Uh, but, but I'm fascinated the way she thinks, which is why we have this great sort of connection. And today you're also doing a session, which is a great <laughs> session. What are we talking about today, Lauren, later We're on? We're talking about assholes, Rob. <laughs> And I have so much to teach you. <laughs> like uh, like Sean said, and uh, like I say, the guild, the guild is is my lab. And I tell people I experiment all the time. And I find myself experimented on by this wonderful human-like algorithm that might exist, Lauren. So, Jose, your, your job is to do the Turing test. <laughs> Okay, I, I'll attend the talk and I'll see what I can do. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna slide into the next thing. Thank you everyone for sharing. I'm looking at Hannah Lee and I'm remembering how we met last year at the Day of the Swan. And what was the what was the question? Question was who are you? So just our, our favorite Jonathan Power did a session and we went to a breakout room in Paris and we were we were uh, we were uh, just one on one, and the whole uh, approach was just ask the other person the question, "Who are you?" And the respondent had to respond what they were, but the person on the other side just asked again, "Who are you?" And when you get asked, "Who are you?" and you go through a little loop where you process and then you predict the next thing you'll say about who are you?" It's fascinating how much you can learn about someone so quickly that you're connected forever, right, Hannah Lee? Most definitely, I still feel it in all my cells. It's life still today, that experience we had. So it's really special. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Sean and you, Rob, for starting all of this. That's uh, wonderful to have you again and uh, look forward to it. So thank you again, all. We would full loop around the sun uh, back to that room with Hannah Lee, and I'm going to tell you who. Are we, we are the Grace Wong Guild. I am Rob Tyree, Robert Vincent Tyree, born in Montreal. Find myself living in Ottawa and then in Toronto and working in the US of A. And I'm with Sean, uh, co-founder of the Guild. So to reset the room, we're talking about a uh, number of sessions today. We've got 24 hours of live sessions. We've got people from around the world. We've got people that were based in Oslo in South America. We're covering the US, Canada. We're into Europe this, uh, this session. We're gonna kick off with some news as we do. We're very fond of processing the news. It's part of sense making. Uh, before I started in the Guild, I did not know what sense making was. I did not know what Kinefin was. I was taught that by Andrea Cates. And I find myself illuminated by this aspect of before you come to an answer, before you rush to a solution, we should stop and think about what the questions are. Who are you? Why are you? What are you? Where are you? And think about that before we jump to a conclusion about what's bad in the world, what's good in the world. We have a theme and a, a pattern uh, that's, uh, that I learned from Sean, uh, that everything that we start in the guild, we start with good news. And when we push it hard, we start with great news. So Sean, should we start the news? I love it. The, the, the interesting thing is there's uh, oftentimes we look at this and we go, wow, there's so much negativity out there. It's like tough to break through the uh, clouds with our, uh, our positive ray of sunshines. Did you have like a, an immediate um piece of good news that you uh you're looking at i'm uh, i'm wading through all of my news going which part of this is positive um 
So the one I picked off uh, last night when I was going through the cycle is that there's something called the loop. And in, in this uh, aspiration where gas is expensive, uh, there's still people that are doing the loop in the USA and Canada. And it is the longest loop you can do, a simple loop that you can do in a boat. It starts on the intercoastal somewhere in North Carolina. It goes down the coast of the USA, down around Florida, um, and uh, then up uh, into the Gulf, and then up the Mississippi into Tennessee, where you are, Chuck. And it's this fabulous way of uh, going through a slow tour of the US. It takes two or three months to do properly, and you're on the boat and visiting the world. That's the loop, and that's what's going on there. I think it's well, uh, you, you bought me you bought me some time, Rob. I'll I'll throw in two quick ones. Uh, one is kind of a current, one is a future. Um, I was I keep considering there's another COVID around the corner, and I was so concerned about monkeypox uh, at the very outset. And I uh, I like most of what's coming out of the medical community that says that uh, this one is probably going to be confined to uh, a kind of a, a much smaller radius than um, than COVID. So. Whew, crisis averted on that one, but there's always looming ones around the corner, I suppose. And for me, as I looked at the news that could happen over the next three, six months, why do I think this is the summer of the concert, uh, at least for a lot of the world? I find uh, there are a number of really big tours. Um, I think um, from most standpoints um, and most countries, things are opening up. And I think our appreciation for summer and live music and some of the best music of our lives is really going to come to the fore this uh, summer so that's my good news well i'm gonna riff on that sean literally uh i'm thinking of the stage because i saw it and i lit up because bruce springsteen just announced his tour in 2023 he's starting in europe and he's doing every two or three days another city across europe and he's announcing his u.s dates afterwards but he's starting in barcelona i believe and he's the east street band is back on the road and they're going to be pumping out rock and roll to free the world. I did take an opportunity a couple of weekends ago to uh, watch the Netflix presentation of Bruce Springsteen on Broadway. And if you're a Bruce Springsteen fan or you're just a student of the American psyche across the last 50 years, uh, I highly recommend that uh, to watch that. Uh, I've had friends who've gone to see him and it's fantastic. It's intimate. It's him on the stage with his mind and his storytelling and his guitar. And uh, just like his uh, biography, it's, uh, it's the inside of his mind. When I read his biography, I didn't read it. I listened to it. So this audiobook is like going to a bar in New Jersey and listening to Bruce talk and discuss and converse across my whole lifetime. I realized that at, uh, you know, the first time I crossed Bruce Springsteen, was my dad bought me an album. And I was a rock and roll kid when I was 14 years old, believe it or not. I had spiky hair. I didn't. I actually had an afro. Uh, but uh, I'm this kid, and then my rock and roller, my dad buys me this country album because I thought he was a country singer. And uh, since then, uh, he's always been in my life. And as he tells his story in his biography, I realized I was there. And it took me two weeks to read the biography or listen to it because I kept doing segues to concerts he'd been at and listening to music that inspired him it's really a tour de force and he's back on stage sean and uh, when the u.s tickets go up or the european tickets i'd love to go see him in europe to see what that's like well it does make us think a little bit about uh we're a guild that was formed out of the pandemic and pretty much uh we've lived on zoom and virtually and so um there'll uh, be some interesting moments ahead where we'll actually start to realize people exist in real life and uh, we'll realize that louise is actually seven feet tall and that uh, lauren is uh <laughs> lauren doesn't actually have blonde hair it's all being fake but um it's um uh as i as i think it's as much as it's been two years um you know if you look at just three months and i think this was going to be our news hour we're going to talk about what do we think are going to be the evolving and new headlines from the next three months Dial back to three months ago, mm -hmm. right? Go into your little TARDIS and go back three months ago. Pretty much, um, you know, we thought Russia won't invade Ukraine. They couldn't possibly invade Ukraine, and they did. 
our gas was probably in the range of, at least in Canadian terms, about a buck per liter, and now it's two bucks. Um, we were still worried about COVID coming out the long winter of COVID, and, and thankfully our, our concerns have kind of been reduced. We just had come out of the Olympics, which for most of us was a pretty much a non-event uh, and worried about, you know, will we ever do large spectacles again? And a whack load of other things. I'm not too sure if you go back three months, Rob, and we've, we've kind of done news articles every week. So we kind of have charted this progress by, by doing our news wrap every week. Are there things that three months ago just would have floored our minds uh, and now they now exist? Well, three months ago, Bitcoin was at $59,000 a unit and now it's not uh twitter had a stock price uh the metaverse was real and the, the unfolding across three months this quarter has been uh, rapid so the uh the types of economic uh looming as we were looking at inflation i think that's the most common question i was asked by my clients is like what is inflation going to do and you had announcements of macroeconomic failure one of my key clients had just gone through a, a technical client software company, just gone through a raise, raised $75 million on a series B. And at the same time, a week later, companies were rolling back, pulling back. And it seemed like a slow roll to me because we started talking about inflation then the war occurred. And then it's just been the decline. And now in this week, I'm seeing signs of the bottom already. Very fast news cycle. It's amazing when you look at different articles that were written and so many get written in December, right? What does the year ahead look like? And now we're five months later into the year, all of their headlines are no longer relevant. Like our ability to look, I remember Dave Marvid, one of our board members and, uh, and one of the first members of the guild um, hit a great line that we put into our first document. It's like, it's really tough to take a long view in the midst of a crisis. And I find uh, time and time again, within the guild, outside the guild, we find this to be true, that we just can't escape that little veil of, of what our experience looks like right in front of our face. And sure enough, six months later, when we read some of our stuff, we go, whoa, it's crazy how we cared so much about something so trivial or how we didn't observe something. I love what Nathan just said. You know, three months ago, wasn't that December 2019? It's, it's, uh, it'll be interesting. My, my last booster was three months ago. It'll be interesting as, as people look at film from this era, era and headlines from this era, somehow the mask, the mask will be kind of an ongoing vestige, I think, of, um, of kind of our last two years together, um, no matter you know, what you look at, if you look at 2019 and 2022, you're going to be seeing a lot of masks in the background. So uh, I think kids, two generations from now, will still be asking, what were they doing? Hopefully they'll be asking, what were they doing? Then not wearing their own masks. Hey, Sean, while I have you here, what's a Grace Wan? Ah, nice. Just as this is the table setter, isn't it? Um, so we didn't know, let's be honest, we didn't know what a gray swan was two years ago. Uh, I'll give credit where credit was due. We had one of our first board meetings ever and a really smart guy, Alan Walker, had uh, said, you know what? Uh, I know we're talking about being like a network or uh, we talked about gray rhinos and we talked about black swans. Really, I think what we're talking about here are gray swans. And I was like, what's a gray swan, Alan? And it's like, well, gray swan events are improbable events, you know, those things that might be less than 25% chance happening in the short term, but if they ever happen, would create a massive uh, impact that has a lot of different knock-on effects. And for us, that really jived. Uh, we, we love the sound of it. Uh, we know more about swans now and swan trivia and what they look like in the air and on the ground and how many swans do they tend to birth and their gestation period and a whole bunch of different things but beyond that you know we've been able to in the guild surface a lot of things that are around the corner that you know honestly if i go back to my corporate life uh, most of the stuff that we talk about in the guild hyper relevant yeah would we have that as part of our daily conversation probably not and so uh you know gray swans improbable events um that create massive impact 
And because they are not completely random, you can actually look at them, you can validate them, you can postulate where they might be going, and you can look at scenarios that include them in some of your futures thinking uh, and sense making. How's that, Rob? That is excellent, Sean. You know, when I think about it, uh, I knew exactly what a black swan was uh, because I read Taleb's book. I read Full by Randomness first, which is a, a, is even a better book. That's back when he had an editor. Now he doesn't have an editor. I uh, admire him greatly. And uh, when the pandemic was hitting, I was thinking to myself, well, if it's a black swan like the 9-11 uh, disaster and an attack on the U.S., um, if it was a black swan, the pandemic, it would crush the economy. It would distract everyone for as long as it took. And based on the history of the Spanish flu, it would likely appear in waves. So I'm going through all this thought process. And then I wanted to publish that it was a black swan. That's what I felt. So I started doing research. And then uh, because Taleb is so chatty on wine, he had a discussion group going on Twitter of whether it was not and he declared it right away because he is the because he invented the idea of a black swan this unknowable unthinkable unexpected surprise that yet is explained very quickly afterwards event that has a worldwide negative impact a black swan he declared right away that oh no the pandemic is not a black swan you know why sean sean it was not a black swan why rob because it's been a predicted for decades totally predictable <laughs> totally and it's been talked about bill gates in 2015 had a ted talk on the next pandemic that was six years to prepare we had ebola where obama was president and went to africa to stop the next pandemic that's when i read a book called uh the hot zone richard preston if you ever want to learn about blood dripping from your eyeballs and ears as you die from a disease that's a novel virus. Read The Hot Zone by Richard Preston. So if it's not a black swan, what is it? So I start searching around on what it is and I found this term and then informed by Alan of the, hey, it's an economic term. It was defined. It's in Investopedia. That's the, the uh, definition that I live by. Uh, and it's important because gray swans do affect the world negatively. They're entirely, as Lauren said, predictable. What do we do about them? So the next Grace Swan. So uh, last uh, year, the rap team, the news desk of the Grace Swan Guild got together and tried to predict the next 21 Grace Swans. Because, you know, we started with 10. And because I work with Sean, it ended up with 21. So, Sean, do you want to just roll through a couple of these? Or how do you feel about that? Yeah, and then we'll talk about, let's bring it open to the audience of what you're thinking about the next Grace Swans are. It's not monkeypox because we have a vaccine. It's not novel. Yeah, and I hadn't thought about turning it into 21, but uh, I'm a bit of a card player. So 21 is a, a bit of a positive blackjack sign. So um, I, I did want to address Robert's comment. Um, he makes a good one in chat about what's the difference between a gray rhino and a gray swan. And we'll admit they're they're pretty much brothers and sisters to each other. Um, they, they have this level of, um, they're not random events. I think that's where they there are, are in common. My sense is, and you can think about just a rhino in Africa or, or in real life where it's just, um, I think the level of probability that a gray rhino is going to happen is much stronger than a gray swan. I think the gray swan, there's, you know, there's an inkling it could happen or your timing might be off. You know, if a gray rhino is going to charge you, uh, it's going to charge you. And so my subtle difference between the two would be, you know, gray rhinos are probably have a higher level of probability happening. And, um, you know, once a, a rhino spots you and wants to start running at you, they uh, they will blindly go at you. Whereas a gray swan is still one of those, yeah, I wonder when and if that's going to happen. Uh, you don't see them too often. Um, with the regards to the 21 gray swan, so uh, just we talked about a number of things. I'm going to do like a Billy Joel song right here in terms of here's the 21 summarized and hopefully... 60 seconds or less, and then hopefully I'll send it back to you, Rob, and then we can pivot to our audience. What is the next three to six months look like with our own kind of future gray swans? We talked about U.S. climate disaster and how hot, how such a hot summer last year would probably lead to another one this year. A major car acquisition by Tesla, a housing market slump, China and Taiwan uh, conflict increasing, stagflation, quantum becoming the new blockchain. Uh, retails and city bankruptcy, Apple purchasing Peloton, 
mass resignation or termination, singularity, um, a chart topping AI band. Uh, we looked at COVID uh, morphing into something else. We looked at a stock market crash. We looked at um, drought uh, burning uh, perhaps one city. We looked at a fairly large, big terror attack on one of the G20 countries. We looked at trade wars. We looked at uh, video and internet game addiction and regulating it. We looked at some ongoing mental health um, issues. We looked at trade wars. Um, and we looked at countries adopting crypto as their national currency and following the suit of El Salvador. Those were some of the things that we had surfaced in our uh, 21 Gray Swan. Some of them aren't looking as good as they did back in January, Rob, but that was the point of it, I think. We, we made the admission that you know, if a quarter of these things happen, um, we'll probably be happy. Uh, your thoughts on it, and then maybe we'll get some thoughts from the, uh, the audience. Sure. Every time I go back to this list, uh, I'm like, blink, blink. Wow. Uh, good analysis. And then this, this type of thing, the way this got created, I put the link to the uh, Medium post. It's part of our weekly uh, news wrap that we do. It was looking back in the year. So every year as we go around the sun at the summer solstice, I think everyone should look back and then look forward. The day of the swan is like that. We look back, then we look forward. It's kind of like an algorithm. If you look back and we're inspired by doing this and we do it rapidly, we, we forced our, our fast thinking brain to process the whole year. And that's how the rap team came up with this list. And I'm um, looking at that one on inflation, uh, double digits, not going to happen, Sean. So what is everyone else thinking is what's uh, Jose, what are you thinking, Hanali? What are you thinking for the next gray swan or something that's big, wide economic and the good news because it's predictable, you already know about it. Lauren, I'm going to go to you next. So, Jose, what do you think? Right. So, the thing that I'm thinking the most right now is the US dollar going out of being the reserve currency. That's kind of the thing that worries me the most. I think that's the reason behind the war in Ukraine. And I think China and Russia are kind of hand in hand doing this. Uh, there are many interests in the world that will benefit from the US dollar not being the reserve currency. Uh, the 33 trillion debt in the US is making people uneasy. And the Chinese probably think that they could be the, the reserve currency, but not with the currency that they have right now. They have to come up with something different. And what I'm thinking is that um, it could be that it's a mixture between crypto, rubble, gen, and who knows what, uh, all bundled together. But the key feature is that is uh, backed by gold, because look at the Russians collecting gold all over the place, right? They have more gold than anybody else in the world right now. They want their oil to be paid in gold or rubbles, which is very interesting, right? Um, if that happens at some point, they could push out a, a crypto backed by gold or who knows what, or some kind of currency. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, China drops all the dollars into the market. And then, what can you do? <laughs> I think this is the next big event. And I'm preparing for that. But it's very hard to prepare because, you know, it's stagflation and all that. So what are you going to do? Jose, Just buy if you've gold? you've got a, a top 10 list of preparation steps, could you share them with the crew here? I know you're a deep thinker. And uh, I, we've had long conversations about world economics and how we bring that back from world to national to local. You're a citizen of the world. Uh, you started your life in South America. You've chosen to move to Western Europe uh, next door to the war. And uh, are you? And one, one question before we go on to other people, are you going to stay in Germany or are you thinking of moving? I'm thinking of moving, but I don't know where to go, honestly. Well, everyone think about where Jose should go because he's a good recruit to wherever you live. Whatever city you live, bring Jose to you. He will bring thank you, thank you. brilliance. Uh, Louise, what are you thinking? Gray Swan, next 24 months. Um, such a good question, Rob. I mean, I think I've explored all the things that we've talked about um, right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if, if I've got any outliers apart from that. Um, but I, I've almost, I don't know whether I'm, 
becoming um, numb to surprises. <laughs> if it's a grace one, not a great deal surprises me. You know, any one of the things that we discuss could pop or it could be something very similar, just in a slightly different shape or form. So, yeah, I've no doubt that, you know, the extraordinary thing, there's a, a great TED talk that I um, listened to the other day and I forget the chat's name, but I'll pop in the chat when I find it. I'm mm -hmm. um, talking about how human beings are conditioned to believe that, um, you know, we're not going to change a great deal. So we, we view the future with everything, all the incumbent stuff of the day, including who we are and our networks and the people in our lives and the situation that we're in. And yet, if we look back, um, back in time, we could never imagine how, that things would have changed so rapidly. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter which five year, three year period you chunk out of, you know, the time that's gone by over the last few decades it's always way more has happened than we ever would have expected. And if you look forward, we, we probably don't expect a great deal to change. So yeah, my, um, I think my radar has changed and uh, yeah, I can't add anything, I can't add anything surprising or unusual to what you suggested. Sorry. I just uh, heard a podcast from Bill Gates. So he thinks the next Gray Swan is another pandemic. And that was uh, last week. Uh, Lauren, I'm going to go to you then. Maybe Chuck, if anyone else wants to lean in, just put your hand up or take yourself off mic and we'll catch it and uh, and share. So Lauren, what do you think the next Grace One is? 24 months. Michael, I know you've got an idea too. Welcome, neighbor. Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to say this is kind of boring, but uh, I, I, just, I just think we'll see the um, kind of overlapping systems collapse so one system going into another and them causing synergy and a like exploding shit bomb of <laughs> disaster <laughs> so give me an example of a overlap are you thinking like is it the un and the next presidency in the u.s and a uh, failed state in south Africa? like is that that kind of level of overlap yeah, or, uh, you know, I it just, uh, you know, when uh, Jose was talking about, like, where do we go, it that rings true for me, too, because we have several options, and we just, there's no safe place, and there was no safe country anymore, like, between the U.S. and France and uh, Africa, the we just can't think of a place that's sure and safe and that's going to be okay because um it just seems like at, at any moment there could be um you know a fascist government elected or um you know i don't know i just i i feel like these things are kind of coming together with climate change and uh all of these things together just exploding got it Wow, climate change. So Chuck, we'll go to you and then Mike over to you afterwards. Chuck? One thing, I'm, I'm doing more thinking. As I get older, uh, I become much less of a prognosticator, uh, maybe more of a sense maker in, in that regard. But what I'm looking at right now isn't so much what the next great one will be. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see maybe an underlying uh, factor that precipitates one great swan above another. And I keep coming back to, is, is a look at the news. And as I look at events, I try to weigh what part of it is driven by kind of uh, cognition and our thinking, and what part of it is driven by uh, that whole reptilian side of our brain, the whole limbic thing. And I'm... I'm beginning to see uh, kind of proportionality there. Uh, so now as, I, as I'm looking ahead, I, I can't prognosticate on the 21 we listed, but I'm, I'm going to go back and look at those and say, okay, if, if one's going to be elevated enough of another, is there a higher degree of uh, limbic involvement? And certainly when we get emotional, it exacerbates uh, what's going on. But right now, that's the thing kind of fascinating me. Uh, what parts driven by our irrationality and our inability to control uh, part of ourselves 
with the more cognitive part of ourselves. So I suspect, and I don't know, it'll, it'll be curious to see as Grace Bonds kind of blooms, is there a relationship, a proportionality of cognitive versus limbic? So that's where I am. I can't prognosticate, but that's where I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I admire uh, Louise, Lauren, and Chuck. Dance making is about this. It's like, wait a second, there's still questions to ask. And how do I process? And you've each given indications on different ways of processing what's going on without leaning into a, a solution or a prediction. Yeah. How about you, Mike? What are you thinking? Um, well, it, it was the last bit of uh, Lauren's comment. I, there, there, there's no shortage of trouble. Uh, but on, on a macro scale, human like earth scale climate change is sort of off the radar it exists but we're busy running around like uh ants and tribes and doing what we do we've got terrible people doing terrible things and people acting around the scripts that they've adopted in their in the stories you know about why they're justified in doing what they're doing but the bigger picture is while we're running around, there's an old saying about, you know, trying to chase the mice out of the cornfield when the elephants are running right behind you. I think the, um, the, the climate change, food security, and a mass resettlement of populations are all coming right down the pipe. And I don't know that in the first wave of our experience as a population we can actually do too much we're trying to do the things as governments and people um so this isn't happy talk but if we're talking about uh things that that are not uh driven by governments uh like you know a russia ukraine or you know these sort of localized territorial things but actually a uh, possible extinction event I, I think it all changes when all the coastal properties uh, coastal places around the world are flooded out like think about new york underwater think about florida half submerged think about uh, you know all the coastal places and there's solutions or part solutions i mean we're really an inventive uh, uh species chuck talked about you know the reptilian there's a hard survival mode um but i think that's the big the big thing and it's easy with all the other terrible things going on to lose sight of, of we're getting, we're boiling ourselves slowly. Mm. So there's uh, a lot of work being done and work to do to try and uh, offset what's coming. That's, I mean, that's the one I think about. Yeah. It's not the only thing I think about, but if you're asking, you know, yeah, we're seeing this, uh, I agree, Mike, that climate change, uh, evidence uh whether or not it's just a natural event in a human cycle or earth cycle or it's human generated it is a thing that we are aware of and uh in ontario we just had something called a derecho not on my bingo card long front storm multiple tornadoes or microbursts and it will be once they count it up because it goes across two provinces and insurance is regulated across provinces like it is states because it crossed two provinces and all our major population, it will be the largest property and casualty event in the past decade. Uh, they're just unwinding it. There's so much disaster still going on in, uh, in fixing the power that this type of extreme weather was predicted and is happening. These long front tornadoes or weather storms are extremely unusual. Uh, it happened uh, last year or the, oh, no, the year before in the States where it was a tornado, tornado season, but it had a hundred mile front to it. This one in Ontario was wider. Flying spiders, monkeypox, climate changes causes changes in animals moving to places where they don't normally move. I noticed that, has anyone heard of alpha gal? Tick-borne disease, you get bitten by a tick and it results in an epigenic change that you develop an allergy to red meat. This is not a diet. This is ticks in your backyard that are normally not near humans. Alpha Gal, there's a Radio Lab podcast on it. 
climate change we worry about it so sean we're at 858 you've done a good news cycle we're teed up for our next event before we get into that uh, let's uh thank you everyone for traveling through the news with us and um collect people from the waiting rooms uh thank you all for your inputs and sharing uh we're going to um stop for a second reset the room and talk about uh, what's coming up in the day, the next couple of events. We've got events going on from now until tomorrow morning. We're gonna start the day in South Africa and end in South Africa, I know that. Uh, so thank you for being around the world with us. And uh, thank you for starting with the Grace Wong Guild Day of the Swan. Day of the Swan is a, a moment in time to take 24 hours to look back in the last year, in the last years what's happened and then to look forward and sharing new ideas, sense making, and future thinking. Sense making two words, future thinking two words. If you take a look at online, there's a big difference when you concatenate things, whether you add dashes to things or not. Quick aside if you're using any tools to support your editing, like Grammarly or now Microsoft, you'll notice that the suggestions that you're getting from those algorithms are to put dashes between things. So if you put climate change somewhere, it'll actually suggest a dash. That's a nudge to help support algorithms understand what you're writing better. English without dashes is actually ambiguous. Depending on where you put the dash in the sentence between two words, it'll have highly different meaning. We're seeing scientists add algorithms to change the way I write. I don't use a lot of dashes. I use a lot of ellipses. But as I'm looking at this and I'm seeing Gamerly saying, well, what, why it's suggesting? And then I go, oh yeah, because the sentence is clearer now that there's a dash in it. Well, our world is changing every day. And that's why we do the Gray Swan Guild. That's why we do the Day of the Swan. Sean, you wanna talk about the rest of the day a little bit and uh, reset the room? Yeah, it'd be great, Rob. Thanks. And uh, and I was messaging you privately because I always panic because we lost like one hour of activity last year when it doesn't say record on my end. I presume we've got record on your end that's going on and it's just on my it's front. So recording live to YouTube. If uh, someone's out in the world, uh, if you want to send a link to your friends, we're actually live to strangers. So oh, thankfully, cool. everyone's got their callers on except for Chuck Metz. You didn't get the memo. I'm just kidding, Chuck. Oh. Um, we don't do the uh, we have very few rituals at the at the Gray Swan Guild. One of them when we're having fun is we put on hats. We've already exposed the ritual early. Usually this is when they're in the cocktail hour and we're gathering people together and just to tell some jokes and be at the water cooler. We put the hats on, that's its indicator. But the Gray Swan Guild is a virtual think tank, so we do things virtually all the time. It's a collection of individuals from around the world that does sense making and futures thinking together. We do events, we do publications, we write together, uh, we work together. And uh, it's, uh, this is uh, one of our biggest events we do in the year. Dave the Swan is, uh, is an unconference. We do one later on. Last year, we called it Thousand Day Radar. That's a much more formal con uh, conference where we do uh, more formal uh, research, the development of research, exposition, and we look forward in that, uh, in that particular conference. So Sean, it's 9.02. Let's, uh, let's queue up the next uh, three or four hours and then bring uh, Dave in for a nine o'clock session. Um, we do have 26 different segments uh, that are going on over the course of the next day. We've just started into our first hour for those that are just arriving. Um, over the next four hours, we'll top line those. Uh, Dave DeBacher out of the Netherlands is gonna be talking to us, uh, to us about myths and metaphors and the impact on the human capacity for change. At 10 o'clock Eastern time, and whatever that means in your world, um, one of our uh, most valued members, uh, Gordon Withrow, is going to talk about AI, emerging meta people, the promise of AI, AI delivered. And I think he puts the question mark in there on purpose. So that's at 10 o'clock Eastern. 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, Louise, um, who is in our room right now, is going to talk to us about the power of collective wisdom and talk to us about a whole blend of leadership and uh, mental models and bias and change and uh, just a bully base of how to how to lead within kind of this complex world that we're in. And then finally, at 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, we're going to talk about global and regional futures. Uh, it's going to be an interview format between Paula um, and uh, Giada, and they're going to talk about 
um, mental health uh, conditions of populations, particularly in, in places around the world that are, um, are challenged. So, um, so that's the next four hours. Um, maybe I'll uh, go back to you and um, you can introduce Dave uh, more formally, um, Rob. Yes, thank you, Sean. Uh, thank you, Dave, for, for being here. I appreciate it. And, uh, and I know that you're going to be talking about a few metaphors. So Sean, bouillabaisse, got to love that metaphor. It's fishy, it's tasty, it's spicy. It was, it was uh, either that or gumbo. So uh, I went with that one. <laughs> so we, uh, it's a way, great way of making sense. Dave DeBaker is a creative catalyst, a foresight facilitator, and innovation researcher. He comes to us from the Netherlands, which has a great experience in keeping the ocean away from the land that is agriculture. So Dave, uh, without uh, much more introduction, could you just give yourself a little bit of uh, intro and then flow into your session? Uh, thanks a lot, Rob. Yeah, so, uh, well, uh, uh, moving on from what you just explained, uh, I did, uh, I'm from the Netherlands and we're very proud to be able to live uh, uh, a few meters on the sea level, uh, which could be an interesting skill uh, further down the line in the future. The sea levels rising everywhere. Um, yeah, so today I'm gonna talk a little bit about my journey of uh, how I actually came to futures uh, thinking and so on a little bit while uh, uh, trying, well, Humbly trying to uh, explain a little bit of the insights that I came across uh, on uh, our capacity for imagination. So yeah, I work as a research lead in an agency here in the Netherlands. I'm also involved in uh, the Weathervane Research Group and the uh, Sickness Sprint. Um, yeah, very happy to be part of